So I have got the Apple Mac Studio and along with that I've got the Studio Display. However, what if I told you I managed to get the display for under $300? Well, I'm going to explain how I've done this, but first, let's go over some features about the Studio Display. So alongside the actual Mac Studio, Apple announced a brand new Studio Display, what is a 5K panel, and funny enough, this is the exact same panel that we've had in the 27-inch iMacs for the last few years in that 5K 27-inch version. With the Studio Max, though, you get some extra features. We now actually have six speakers built inside it. We also have a center stage camera, 12 megapixel camera, and also there's an A13 Bionic to sort of control bits and pieces like Siri and also that center stage camera. On top of this as well, on the rear, we also have a Thunderbolt 3 port what can be hooked up to the likes of your Mac Studio, your Mac Mini, or your MacBooks or any kind of Mac that you have out there or even say an iPad what has a USB-C port. And talk about USB-C ports, there are three on the back that allows you to connect things like hard drives and bits and pieces like this up to 10 gigabytes per second but each USB-C port, which is really, really amazing. The screen does come in though at a hefty price at 1,600 US dollars. So it is quite expensive. So you're probably wondering at this stage, why am I talking about $1,600? The video title says $300. So Matt, I want to know how you done that. Well, let me tell you a little secret and how I've managed to get this monitor for $300. And that secret is, this monitor is not the monitor I'm talking about. There is another Apple monitor out there what you can get for less than $300. And basically it does almost everything the same as what this monitor does right now. Let me introduce you to the Thunderbolt monitor. It cost me 220 pounds, what is less than 300 US dollars. Putting the Thunderbolt monitor next to the studio display, yes, you can see a few differences. First of all, the bezels are about a third thicker on the Thunderbolt display, and that's probably the most obvious thing. However, what if I told you that the Thunderbolt monitor has such features like a FaceTime camera, for example, also it has built in speakers. It actually has three speakers built in and it's fully compatible with the likes of the Mac Studio and also the likes of the brand new MacBook Pros out there with using this adapter, converting it to a Thunderbolt 3 port. The monitor also has other abilities, like it can actually charge your MacBook Pro at 85 watts, whereas the studio display actually charges it at 96 watts. So we're only talking 11 watts in it. Also the fact that it has USB ports on the rear and these are standard size ones as well. So, so far this monitor is shaping up pretty good to be fair and for under $300 you can't really go wrong. But there's got to be a catch here hasn't there? Especially the new monitor costs $1,600 and this is under $300. So what are the key differences? Well, let me explain them. Well, the first difference I want to talk about is the actual camera, what's in the center of the display. On the Thunderbolt one, you get a 720p camera, and then on the actual brand new Cinema Studio display, you actually get a 12 megapixel center stage camera. Well, obviously it's far more superior. But then having said that, are you really going to be using center stage on this monitor? And would you pay $1,600 just for that? You'd actually be better off buying the cheapest iPad out there for $320 and you get center stage and a 12 megapixel camera inside that. So another difference is the speakers that are in both of these monitors. So with the Thunderbolt monitor, we actually get three speakers inside it. We get one on the left, we get one on the right, and also we have an extra one that gives out more sort of bassy noises. Where with the brand new Cinema Studio display, we actually have six speakers. And Apple have got some special bits and pieces going on there to make that sound sound really, really rich. And that's helped with the A13 Bionic what's actually inside the actual monitor. But to be deadly honest, there isn't that much difference in the actual sound quality. Have a listen here. First of all, I'll do the studio display with its six speakers. I've been able to play around with it for the last day or so. It's been absolutely amazing. I have loved the performance on this. But to be deadly honest, with using this iPad Air, it's... And now here's the Thunderbolt monitor with its three speakers. I've been able to play around with it for the last day or so. It's been absolutely amazing. I have loved the performance on this. But to be deadly honest, with using this iPad Air, 
Can you even tell the difference? Well, recording it, I guess, on the microphone that I have right here, it's not probably the best quality out there to pick up all the sounds and richness. But I can tell you now, I cannot really tell the difference that much. And by the way, just to let you know, I did have my hearing tested about three months ago, and I've been told my hearing's absolutely fine. So generally, there isn't that much in it. So Apple boasting it has got six speakers inside it. Yeah, it probably goes a little bit more louder than the other monitor, but generally the actual quality is superb in both of these monitors. Now next is the screen resolution. If I show you both of the monitors side by side here, you cannot probably tell the difference whatsoever. But I can tell you this, that the actual studio display has a 5K panel inside it. And like I said, this is the same as the 27 inch iMac that has been around for the last few years but the actual Thunderbolt monitor actually only has a 2K display inside it. And straight away you're thinking, well then that's the reason why it's so much cheaper and that's why you should get the 5K panel. But as I've been using the 5K panel over the last few days, I've actually realized being that it's a 27 inch monitor and my face isn't pressed up right against it and I have it a bit of a distance away from me, I cannot actually really tell the difference between both of these monitors. I can actually see there is an ever so slight difference with the new studio display but apart from that I wouldn't really notice if you didn't tell me the actual Thunderbolt display with that 2k display built inside it is still really really amazing even in 2022 and as I said you're not going to be pressing your screen right up to it looking for the pixels it is a genuinely really good panel and remember, the thing that I always come back to, the studio display costs $1,600, whereas the Thunderbolt monitor costs $300. There is a big difference in price there, and yet the quality, what you get with that Thunderbolt display for $300 is absolutely superb, and it's really, really amazing. So next, I want to talk about ports. But before I do that, I want to talk about today's channel giveaway. So right now, I'm doing a giveaway on this channel for this. This is an iPhone 13 Pro Max in silver white, and I'm gonna be giving it away to one lucky subscriber when we get over 350,000 subscribers. And if you look at the subscriber count, it's not that far away at all. And all I want to know from you guys to be in a chance to get your hands on this iPhone 13 Pro Max is write down in the comments below of what Apple gear you're planning to buy in 2022, or what technology gear you want to get in 2022. Put it down into the the comments below and when we get over 350,000 subscribers I'll be announcing who the winner is of this iPhone 13 Pro Max in a video so if you are new here make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell because you won't want to miss that notification for that video with that said there are a lot of scammers and spammers out there some of them even impersonating me and telling you to whatsapp them or telegram them and told you you've won a giveaway it is not me at all ignore these users completely or report them. Like I said, I'll be announcing the winner only when we get over 350,000 subscribers and it will be done by a video on this channel. With that out of the way, let's go back to the video. So looking at the rear of the studio display, you can see there's only four ports on here. One of those ports is a Thunderbolt 3 port, and this is the port that you hook up to your Mac Studio, or you hook up to say your MacBook, whatever Mac you've got. The other three ports are allowed to be used to be plugged into say hard drive, USB things, bits and pieces, and the transfer speeds for each of those ports are 10 gigabits. So it's really impressive and in line in 2022. But switching over to the Thunderbolt monitor, what ports do we have on here? Well, on the back of this monitor, what you actually have is a load of different ports. First of all, you may have noticed we have an Ethernet port, and that Ethernet port transfers data at one gigabyte per second, or one gigabit per second even. And you may have noticed on the back there were three USB ports, and this is probably the little bit of the downer of this monitor. These three ports are USB 2.0. But don't let that discourage you right away. Remember, if you have got yourself a Mac Studio, for example, on the front you have USB-C ports, and there are also USB-C ports on the rear of the Mac Studio, just like there are on the rear of the monitor of the cinema display or the studio display. And again, you would have to still put your hand around and hook up devices into this. So really there isn't much difference there. The same also if you've got yourself a MacBook and you connect this up to this Thunderbolt display, you will also still have your USB-C ports on your actual MacBook where you can 
plug in your sort of really speedy hard drives or USB bits and pieces as well. Now, as I did mention at the beginning of this video, to hook up this display to your Mac Studio or to the likes of your MacBook Pro, you will need to get an adapter to convert this from a Thunderbolt 2 to a Thunderbolt 3. And these cost around about $20 on Amazon. And in fact, I'll hook one up in the description below. But you also have the ability to use a MagSafe charger. And again, you can also buy an adapter on the likes of eBay, what will convert this MagSafe into USB-C. And again, you can charge the likes of say, your MacBook Pros or your MacBook Air with this display. And that is absolutely fantastic that you can do this. So in conclusion, the new studio display is absolutely amazing. However, there is an alternative for far, far cheaper, and it's also made by Apple. I do love the studio display, but the cost of it at $1,600 is quite a lot of money. If this display came out at say about $500 or say $600, I probably would actually definitely say, I'm definitely gonna keep this monitor. But because of the price tag it has got, it's making me think, do I even keep this monitor? Maybe this Thunderbolt monitor, I should just keep this instead, it's far cheaper, it does everything I need it to do. And even buying those extras and adapters and bits and pieces like that, it's not gonna cost much more to keep it and run this. But I do still love that studio display. I'm really, really, like I said, on the fence about this one. So really, I'm gonna put it out to you guys. What do you think? Do you think I should keep the studio display? Or do you think I should keep my Thunderbolt monitor? Yes, like I said, the studio display is shiny, it's new, but at the end of the day, I'm not really probably gonna get the full advantage out of it. And the Thunderbolt monitor can do exactly the same, but there again, it's not shiny and new. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below and let me know. And with that guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also at the same time as well, if you wanted the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons like this one, please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time guys, I will see you really soon. Take care now. Bye bye.